Everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Nick's Missile for the final chapter. I am Patricia and I'm here with Admin James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, finally, after many months, um, we finally have the two of us together discussing about rejected uh, Nicktoons pilots. So I want to give a special shout out to Clint from the Rise and Fall of Nickelodeon for joining on three of the episodes of Nick's Missile 4, as well as Mike Gems. So thank you guys so much. Now we're back to the basics. So today we're going to be discussing uh, about a certain animation company that pretty much was responsible for some of the best Nicktoons ever made. We're talking about Klasky Chupo. So Klasky Chupo, whether you like their animation or hate it, Klasky Chupo around the 90s and 2000s were some of the most influential animation companies of all time. They created and animated and produced many iconic animated shows on Nickelodeon or otherwise. I kind of feel like they kind of opened the door to the art style of Avenger Titan and regular show. I could see that, yeah. I'm, I could kind of see regular show being kind of inspired by Klasky Chupo, sure. So Klasky Chupo was responsible for the likes of Rugrats, the Owl Monsters, the Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, as told by Ginger, all grown up, and sadly, Rugrats preschool days. But... So during the 2000s, Klasky Chupo had pitched a lot more pilots that they wanted to do for Nickelodeon, and a lot of them were rejected. Uh, so we're going to be talking about some of the more well-known rejected Klasky Chupo pilots that were never picked up as TV series. We're not going to talk about all of them. We're just going to talk about the ones that are probably the most well-known. If you are interested in watching them, they are um, a lot of them are on YouTube, especially on the Klasky Chupo YouTube channel. So you can go check that out. Let's kick things off with probably the most infamous out of the rejected Klasky Chupo pilots, and that is Psycho Ferret. Now, Psycho Ferret would have probably came out like around maybe 2001 or 2002, and uh, a, a lot of people were involved with it. In, in fact, one of the people who were involved with the creation of Psycho Ferret was Emily Kapnick, a.k.a. the creator of As Told by Ginger. The art style kind of harkens back to our real monsters. It does feel like it's our real monsters looking. So, yeah, Psycho Ferret, um, what are your thoughts on Psycho Ferret, James? Because I'd like to know about your thoughts on this. I like it. It's kind of reminiscent of um, our real monsters, as I've said. And... Um, it really did have a lot of potential as a pilot, and it's a shame it never got picked up. It's pretty interesting, to be quite honest. So, you have these twin sisters who have a pet ferret, and they live in a neighborhood in which pets are forbidden. And you have this really fat kid who kind of reminds me of a mixture between, like, Snotty Boy from Back at the Barnyard with a little mixture of Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron because, you know, he blew the nose bubbles. And, uh... Yeah, he basically was, like, tattling on anybody who has a pet. He even got his grandma arrested, like, multiple times because she would be having a dog or having a, a cat or a bird or something like that. So the twin, the twin sisters want to hide their ferret, and the ferret just so happened to have gone into his house, and they're trying to play hide-and-seek so they can be able to catch the ferret right before it's too late. But yeah, there was a lot of questions that I have about Psycho Ferret. Like, for example, um, what happened to the neighborhood that made them decide to forbid pets from ever allowing into their neighborhood? Did something bad happen that that hap that made them do the the rule? Um, yeah, there's a lot of questions to be said. So it was pretty interesting. I, I would have liked to have seen where the story would have led up. If Psycho Fair would have came out, it would have came out like around either 2001 or 2002. So this was like around the time in which um, you know, we still had Rocket Power, we still had the Wild Thornberries, we still had As Told by Ginger, 
We even still had Rugrats, and All Grown Up wouldn't come out until a few years later, so this was still at the height of Klasky Chupo's popularity. A lot, and also, this would have probably been around the same time as Invader Zim, so it would have still given, like, that dark, moody atmosphere. Um, not as, like, incredibly surreal as Invader Zim, but it does kind of have, like, that somber, um, you know, tone, because Psycho Ferret, there's... There's a lot of monochrome colors. The only noticeable color that I did see was the ferret itself. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I would have liked to have seen more out of it. I mean, if if Psycho Ferret would have came out, it would have um, been like a nice change of pace from you know the more lighter tone Nicktoons that were out at the time. So it's actually pretty interesting. So yeah, uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next uh, cartoon that we're going to be talking about is called uh, Little Freaks. See, Little Freaks was created by Erin Ehrlich. And if you, if any of you guys knew who Erin Ehrlich is, um, she was a writer on Klasky Chupo. She wrote a handful of episodes of As Told by Ginger. Uh, she wrote a few episodes of Pinky and the Brain. And she created this show, and she was the one who wrote the, um, wrote, wrote the pilot for this. And... Um, basically what it was about is that it's about a bunch of kids who developed weird superpowers due to a freaky industrial mishap. So, yeah, interesting to know, you know, Klasky Chupo delving into the superhero, uh, genre, which, um, yeah, this is something pretty new for Klasky Chupo. They wouldn't do something like not, this. Not if you count the Mega Diaper Babies. The Mega Diaper Babies are, um, you know, a case in which the Rugrats characters did become superheroes, and I guess we can count Captain Blasto in that one episode where Chucky wanted to become a superhero and be brave. But, yeah, an entire TV series where we would have had, you know, kids as superheroes. So, that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, something that Klasky Chupo would not do. So, yeah, I thought that this one was a pretty decent idea. It had some potential. And uh, would have came out around the, probably the early 2000s. So, around the time of Danny Phantom and My Life as a Teenage Robot. So, if it would have came out during that time, I think it would have fit in just fine. Although, I don't know how it would have stacked up compared to Danny Phantom or My Life as a Teenage Robot. I think the reason why a lot of these pilots didn't get picked up is because Arlene and Gabar actually kind of had a dispute with Nickelodeon over the budget of um, the Nicktoons. I just looked it up right now, and apparently this, w this would have came out in 2006, so I was wrong, I'm sorry. So, it would have came out, like, after My Life as a Teenage Robot and Danny Phantom, but this would have came out, like, I don't know, maybe, like, before or during Af Avatar The Last Airbender? So, yeah, I can kind of see why it didn't really do so uh, well. Klasky uh, Chupo and Nickelodeon, basically, new management came to Nickelodeon and they couldn't agree on the budget, the price of um how much they would all cost to produce they had a falling out over that and that resulted in the cancellation of all of their shows that does make a lot of sense and also um it's funny thing because um i uh, if any of you guys go um visit my personal youtube channel uh, tune in to an episode of we're in between which is an uh an as told by ginger podcast that i do and we had um one of the developers of As Told by Ginger named Eric Casimiro. And he originally pitched Rugrats Preschool Days like around 2001, 2002. And um, after he left, apparently they took his idea and they decided to, you know, continue off from, you know, an episode of Rugrats that they did previously and try to see if they can showcase Angelica and Susie as preschool, as preschoolers. So... Yeah, I guess this was like around the time in which when Klasky Chupo was at their lowest point. You you know, you're right, because at this point in time, you know, uh, a lot of their shows were ending. Rugrats was ending. Uh, the Wild Thornberry's Rocket Power were already over at that point. As told by Ginger... Um, it ended in 2004, even though it never fit, it never aired any of its episodes in the U.S. And as for um, All Grown Up, I think it was still running some episodes at the point. But yeah, um, ever since the likes of Rugrats Go Wild, it pretty much was like, 
they were no longer interested in, you know, doing anything with Klasky Chupos. If Little Freaks would have came out in 2006, then they already had Avatar The Last Airbender. So I think that a masterpiece like Avatar The Last Airbender couldn't compete against something like, um, some, uh, you know, like a pretty much almost defunct animation company that was pretty much like on the last heels of their... Um, of, you know, uh, pretty much on the last heels of their career. So, yeah, um, it would have been interesting if we would have seen um, Little Freaks, but I think that it, it just couldn't compete against all the other um, action-packed comedy Nicktoons that we had at the time. I agree with you there. All right, so let's go over to another one that, oh my God, I really need to talk about this one. So let's talk about uh, Junkyard Teddies. Oh my god. Okay, so three words. Computer generated imagery. Klasky Chupo doing CGI. If you thought that Klasky Chupo's animation in 2D was scary, oh my god, their 3D animation. I'm sorry, Klasky Chupo cannot do 3D. I think that they've gone bad with Splat, no. Yeah, but at least with Splat, it's a logo, and it's not meant to be, like, something to last for, um, you know, a 22-minute or an 11-minute episode. But, yeah, just seeing the textures of this, it's... Oh my god, I don't even know what to say about it. But, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, to be fair, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty juvenile. It's okay. Nothing really much to say about it. So basically, Junkyard Teddies is about, you know, it takes place in a junkyard, and you have these two teddy bears who are on a mission to perfect the art of doing nothing. So it's basically like Seinfeld, except with teddy bears, in a junkyard. I think I was just trying, um, trying to see what would stick and what would be popular, because they wanted to be able to move on move with the times because they wanted to be able to regain their audience and they wanted to be able to do something that would win audiences over but it seemed like uh, networks passed on it and they wouldn't be able to make a return until a decade later the splat right but even then arlene klasky kind of made a slight comeback with klasky chupo in which she was involved with like some sort of comic book involving with a zombie skateboarding or something. I don't remember what it was called, but yeah, that was like the, they were, they were planting the seeds of their major comeback, which came out a few years later with, um, the splat logo. And as of right now, um, as of, as of recently, um, there's the Rugrats, uh, comic books, which are going to be coming out really soon. So yeah, Klasky Chupo seems to be on their way towards a major comeback. Now the Rugrats comics are not going to be, made by Klasky Chupo, but it's a start. Well, I mean, I didn't say that. I mean, sure, it's a start, but I'm I'm referring to, like, their characters are becoming more relevant again. So I'm thinking that, you know, it's the same thing with Invader Zim. The same thing happened in which the comics came out, and then we waited about a year later in which the comics became really popular, and now we're getting an Invader Zim TV movie. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if the comic books of... Rugrats are becoming really popular, and maybe we'll hear an announcement about, like, coming soon, there's going to be a brand new TV movie about Rugrats. I wonder what they would be up to now if they were to make um, a special. Were there any ideas that they wanted to be able to do but never got off the ground, like Hey Arnold? I have no idea. To be quite honest, I mean, unlike Hey Arnold, in which Hey Arnold had the Jungle movie and they couldn't finish their ending that they wanted to, Rugrats didn't really have anything that they left behind. The show, the original show ran for over 10 years, and All Grown Up kind of completed the kind of like answer the question about what would the characters be like if they grew up. So if Rugrats were to come back as a TV movie, I don't even have a clue. Would they have a midquel to showcase, like, maybe them as little kids and then it would lead up to all grown up? Or maybe it will show them as adults? Like, I mean, if, if we were to take into account, like, you know, the show came out in 1991. Would it, and, and at this point in time, they would probably be in their 30s. So who knows? Maybe it'll be, like, Fuller House or... Um, 
Go ahead. Um, all grown up may be retconned because the original crew might be coming back for this one, like the original, original crew. Hmm, maybe, who knows? Uh, maybe maybe they'll actually tell a version of the Rugrats characters grown up like the original creators wanted to do. And I'm referring to, like, not referring to, like, um, you know, the, um, you know, Arlene Klasky and Gabor Chupo. I mean, sure, I'm referring to, like, you know, I know Paul Germain had nothing to do with Rugrats as soon as the, um, as soon as the original run ended. He had nothing to do with the revival or any of the movies. So I would like to see his take on, you know, the characters growing up, even though that he said it was a, he said it was a terrible idea, but I mean, anything's possible at this point. But no, yeah, like I don't think a lot if episode would be bad, but why make it? it don't mean like he probably wouldn't want to make a whole show about it. Hmm, possibly. But yeah, um, I, you know what? It, we're we're talking about Rugrats, and we haven't even talked at once about Junkyard Teddies. But there's really not much to say about it. It's just, it's just teddy bears in a junkyard, and they just. Do nothing, and that's pretty much it. If Rugrats did make a comeback, that would mean that it would be one of the rare shows that was cancelled twice and um, reinstated the third time since Family Guy and Johnny Bravo. Yeah, that would be kind of crazy. All right, so yeah, I, I mean, as you can tell from our discussions of Junkyard Teddies, we pretty much have nothing to say. So let's move on to the next one, which is called Big Babies. And we have uh, these babies who are actually adults in real life. And they manage to um, they manage to move into an apartment building, and they take their free time to uh, compete against various competitions. So yeah, basically, it's sort of like Rugrats, except that you have these babies, that, but they're actually adults, and they love competing against things. For- it seemed a little awkward that they would make an idea based on the big hit, not only like an idea similar to that big hit. But it could have probably stood out on its own and had it kept going. I mean, let's not forget that American Dad, when it first came out, was accused of being a Family Guy ripper. But um, as time went on, it started finding its own voice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting about some of the things that they did in that one. They did, like... um, uh, let's see, though, the, there was uh, the, uh, the one that really I remember that stick on the top of my head was that they competed against like a bull, f- uh, the running of the bulls, I think. And yeah, it's just crazy to me that I see a bunch of babies and they're competing against a really, really dangerous sport like that. So that's the only thing I remember about it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it's actually a pretty interesting thing about that. It You know, it's... It's kind of weird, you know? It's basically like you have these babies who are adults and they just live off they just live off really extreme lives. So yeah, it does have that Rugrats vibe to it in which you have babies, quote unquote, uh you know, not really, but they're tiny they have infant bodies and they're the main protagonist of a show. So yeah, um I don't really see a lot of I I mean, I don't know. Maybe if it would have ran a few more episodes, like, with them traveling all over the world and doing stuff, maybe it could have been really cool. But, um, yeah, nothing... I mean, it just basically feels like they were trying to do Rugrats again, you know? I know what you mean. Um, Trying to go back to basics. Yeah, basically... Yeah, exactly. Trying to go back to basics with uh, featuring babies as their main protagonist. Okay, so I'm going to talk about one more because we're this is this thing is going off way long enough. So, uh, yeah, the last one that I want to talk about is one that I talked about way back in Nika 35 Part Four, which is called Gessar, and Gessar is about a heroic boy who brings peace between two enemy kingdoms. And I basically said that this was nothing more than an Avatar: The Last Airbender ripoff, and. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to know that Klasky Chippo wanted to do an action show. An action show featuring a boy trying to make peace between two kingdoms who are fighting against each other. That sounds very similar to something like Avatar or Samurai Jack. That's pretty shocking. I thought it was pretty decent. 
Yeah, I, I do think that this is definitely, I think hands down, this is their most ambitious pilot that they've ever created. It is something completely different than what Class Kichupo is known for. But when you take a look at Gessar and something like Avatar The Last Airbender, it feels really similar. Like that Asian influence and the, the kid who's trying to bring peace to um, a fighting, uh, you know, two fighting nations. Or in this case, like with Avatar trying to bring peace into the world with the Fire Nation. And it also doesn't help that Gessar has, um, has like almost like a bald shaped head. Like throughout, like in the beginning of the episode, and then you know he kind of styled his hair a little bit to look more Asian. Uh, I actually did some research on Gessar, and you can find out more information about it at Laszlo No Sex uh, website. He was the head designer of Gessar, and he gives more information about the um, the pilot. Apparently, this pilot was supposed to be an animatic for a feature film. This was supposed to be a movie for Paramount Pictures. So this would have potentially been a Nickelodeon movie. I think that if this would have been like maybe the last Nickelodeon movie that Klasky Chuba would have ever produced, I would have definitely been a lot more satisfied with it than the one that we got, which was Rugrats Go Wild. Well, Ali did say in an interview with the Nickelodeon Animation Podcast that she was working on a feature film. I wonder if this one will be it. Uh, probably not. I don't think so. I mean, Arlene Klasky did direct it, but I don't think she was the one who wrote it. I mean, if anything, Arlene would have probably done something a little bit more different because this is completely different than what Klasky Chupa was known for. So, yeah, I mean, if it would have came out as a feature film, I think that that would have been a pretty interesting idea, you know, to see something a little bit more action-packed for, you know, Nickelodeon. Because at this point in time, this was probably when Nickelodeon was starting their second dark age. Like, the one, I mean, the first one being, like, all the way back from the 80s. And this would have been, like... I think this was probably around the time in which when Klasky Chupo was no longer creating shows for Nickelodeon anymore. So maybe this would have been their swan song. If that would have been the case, then I think it would have probably done maybe even better than the last Airbender movie. I agree. So, it didn't really... No, they are starting that sort of comeback because of um, Nickelodeon's new experiment on bringing back the classics. Um, a TV movie, so maybe that could lead to some of these pilots getting a fix up and um, possibly getting greenlit. Hmm, maybe. I mean, at this point in time, with everything that's been going on over the past couple of years, um, you know, anything that they announce, I wouldn't be surprised because at least we know for sure that at this point in time, Nickelodeon is caring about their older fan base and. You know, the fact that they're doing TV movies based off of shows that they've that people have loved for many years. Who knows? Maybe we would see Klasky Chupo come back in some way, whether it be a movie based off of Rugrats or uh, any of the other Nicktoons, or maybe one of the failed pilots. Maybe it will get a second chance. So, you know what? At this point in time, we'll just have to see. So, yeah, I know that there are a lot of other Klasky Chupo pilots that we didn't get a chance to talk about, but these are the most well-known. If any of you guys uh, would like to share on any Klasky Chupo pilots that you would have liked to have seen picked up, then please leave it in the comments below. So, yeah, I think that we can conclude this episode of Nick's oh, Missile... F oh, go ahead. Immigrants. I know that it got eventually turned into a future film, but... It was originally going to be on Spike TV's animation block. Hmm, interesting. There's that too. So yeah, I think that's it for this episode of Nick's Missile 4. Uh, speaking of Gessar and Avatar, so tune in next time as we're actually going to be talking about a, um, a TV movie that would have been based off of Avatar The Last Airbender that never came out due to the fact that Nickelodeon wanted to concentrate on Legend of Korra. So see you next time. You got rejected. And your gene step is your disgrace. You got rejected. And you feel like you've been punched in the face. You got rejected. Tell your friends you let us boss in the mail. You got rejected. So just suck it up and go to hell.